morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Peter's Church. But there are parts of our service that will be filmed from uh, St. Mark's and St. Nicholas as well. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Reverend Eloy. As of July the 1st, I will be the deacon in charge of this parish. I'll be serving an internship for about two months and then moving into full-time lead ministry. This is our first service together because on Father's Day we felt the need to pray together. And because we missed Mother's Day, we're having a tribute to mothers today as well. Format for the service, like I mentioned, is local here at St. Peter's and two remote readers from the other churches. We hope after July the 1st we will conduct regular virtual services until we are back and celebrating services in our churches again. I'm very pleased that uh, some of you accepted the invitation very eagerly to participate in the service today. And to everyone at home, thank you for tuning in. We hope that our words and actions will move you in some way in the service to God within the next week or two. Happy Father's Day. And a belated greeting. Happy Mother's Day. Our service actually begins now with uh, three choruses. And we're very glad to introduce Claude Stay, and he'll lead us in music in this service today. Claude. Thank you, Reverend Eli. Good morning, everyone. Three choruses. Everybody at home sing on.
For some of us, our mothers and fathers' love is like God's love, too deep, too long, too wide, too strong to measure. Some of our moms and dads are here. For others, moms and or dads are absent because of death or broken relationships. Sometimes, one parent is loving as one person, but in the power of two. For some of us, God's love fills in the empty spaces. All of us are shaped by the substance and quality of relationships with our parents. On this day, when we remember what it means to have a father or mother, or be a parent or grandparent, we recognize the importance of such people in our family and our communities. We pledge as a congregation to love and nurture the family leaders among us so that they will manifest the love of God in all that they do. Loving God, you are our fathers and our mothers. We thank you that you have shown us how important it is to follow your example. As we grow in faith, teach us to be obedient to your will. Respect you as children of God. Thank you for your mercy despite our disobedience. Strengthen us to stand <coughs> against the challenges of this world, honoring your name and trusting your grace. In the name of your Son, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against our God and our name. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have, have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Genesis. The child grew and was weaned, and on the day that Isaac was weaned, Abraham had a great feast. But Sarah saw that the son whom Hagar the Egyptian had borne to Abraham was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of that slave woman and her son, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance of my son Isaac. 
The matter distressed Abraham greatly, because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to whatever Sarah tells you, because it is through Isaac that your offspring will be reckoned. It will make the son of the slave into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Early in the morning, Abraham took food and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her way and wandered in the desert of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went off and sat down about a bow shot away, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel called, the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he lies there. Take the boy up and take him by the hand, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. So she went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of Paran, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. One. Our psalm plan for today is Psalm 86, verses 1 to 10 and 16 and 17. We will say the psalm responsibly. Bow down your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor in misery. Keep watch over my life, for I am faithful. Save your servant who puts his trust in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for you are my God. I call upon you all the day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for you, for to you o Lord, I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. And great is your love toward all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer, and attend to the voice of my supplication. In the time of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor anything like your works. All nations you have made will come and worship you, O Lord, and glorify your name. For you are great, you do wondrous things, and you alone are God. Turn to me and have mercy upon me. Give your strength to your servant, and save the child of your enemy. Show me a sign of your favor, so that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed. Because you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. We will say a psalm prayer together. God of mercy, fill us with the love of your name, and help us to proclaim before you the world, that all peoples may celebrate your glory in Jesus Christ our Lord.
because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But for the life he lives, he lives to God. In the same way, count yourselves dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Okay, I'd like to do a uh, selection call. It, it is no secret.
So do not be afraid. You are worthy more than many sparrows. Whoever acknowledges me before others will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace to you. I do not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies will be my members of my own household. Anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds their life will lose, and whoever loses their life for my sake will find it. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts that we may serve you. Amen. Amen. Though there are many topics in our three readings for today, I am unable to get past the reading from Genesis and the symbol of water in our lives, and also how this reading ties into the significance fathers, father figures, and heritage, both physical and spiritual. Abraham is in celebration moment for Isaac, his son Sarah. And no wonder they wish to celebrate because the Lord saw it possible for two people well past their prime to produce an offspring. Isaac, Isaac is the living proof of that miracle. Abraham is throwing a huge kitchen party. It is a wonder Claude wasn't called to perform. Sarah, in the middle of this, requires that Abraham send Ishmael, his older child by servant Hagar, into the desert. So there will be no sharing of Isaac's birthright. Now casting anyone out into the dry, desolate desert is a death sentence. Because life without water in the hot, glaring desert is a short one. Water is our most important commodity. Without it, we cannot live more than a few days. Our bodies will quickly dehydrate without water. It would affect our organs, our brains. The human body is made up of nearly 80% water, and this life source must be constantly replenished through drinking and eating foods that contain water. You don't need to be a scientist to figure out that water is our main biological source of life. Biblical people knew this well. This is why people either lived by a body of water or they created wells to access water. And before today's technology, the vast deserts of biblical times were dry, barren wastelands. They were extremely hot and perched, waterless places that could easily have rendered a traveler helpless within less than a day. Without the proper provisions, and without, with only the very primitive water containers they held in these days, and these were made usually of thick skins, man nor woman, especially a little child, wouldn't last long in the glaring sun of the desert. Now in this assigned reading, in Genesis 21, when Sarah demands Abraham send Hagar and the little Ishmael into the desert, she's giving them a death sentence. She's eliminating the competitors for Isaac's birthright without even laying a personal hand upon them. But her intent is clear. They are not to return. Abraham, like you would be, is distressed. 
But God promises Abraham that no harm will come to the boy, that he too will be a father of a great nation. So in trust as usual to God, Abraham fulfills Sarah's wish. And when the water flask runs out, mother and son weep, expecting to die that day. But our God, hearing the boy crying, reveals to them a well in the midst of the desert, from which Hagar can fill her flask. The scriptures tell us that from that time on, God remained with the boy, and he lived in the desert with an Egyptian wife, founding, according to tradition, the twelve Arab nations. Now, there are countless images in our scripture text connecting people of God, our provider, to water. Covenants are made through floods, crossing bodies of water, or through bodies of water. Water is the center of our baptism. Jesus turns water into wine, and also tells of providing eternity to us by allowing us to drink from his living water. Water becomes a source and a symbol of God's wisdom, his abiding presence, and for us, life, and even rebirth. In the original Genesis creation story, what was first present on earth? Water. The Hebrews call the natural springs that flow and bubble from under the earth living water, and that's just what it was for them. They saw these streams accessed by digging wells in the earth as proof of God's creative power flowing beneath the earth. Therefore, finding water was not only an answer to physical sustenance, but a gift from God, a healing gift, a sustaining gift, a life-giving gift, a promise. Our early biblical ancestors were nomads. In fact, we learned that Ishmael himself would become a nomadic desert dweller, knowing where to find water and food, knowing how to live successfully in the desert wilds. But he also had God dwelling with him and within him. Therefore, he would always know how and where to access water. There's no trouble to find evidence in our scripture of what molded our spiritual ancestry. There is a difference between our physical DNA and our spiritual DNA, but they are connected. Today, as we celebrate Father's Day, we too celebrate both a genetic ancestry and a faith ancestry. For we inherit from our fathers not only physical features, passed on through generations, but we learn from them our heritage, our culture, our manners, our wisdom, and how to live in our faith. It's no joking matter that we are all aging, and we think our parents begin to think more like us. We are not rubbing off on them. Don't kid yourself. It's more that we are patterning, patterning ourselves after them as we become of their age. We think we haven't changed, because I'm still eating in my mind. But our parents haven't changed nearly as much as we have, and we come to honor their knowledge and their wisdom. We learn both simple and complex wisdom from our parents, who followed from their moms and dads right on back to the beginning of each and every one of our family trees. It's not just how to tie your shoe, to bake a cake, to catch a ball, or to drive a car. Deep family wisdom and faith come to us from God, the ultimate parent, but through the filter of wisdom of our own parents. Just as we felt safe in Mama's arms, there was no place better than it, so too should we feel protected, protection offered through our beliefs and our faith, because we are also safe in Jesus' arms. If you allow it, God is not just a distant creator, but a present, wise, 
nurturing, and providing father figure. Yours may be an intimate relationship with a God who is a beloved companion, an ever-present source of wisdom. As God dwelled with Ishmael, in Scripture we see how he becomes accustomed to his desert home. He protects him, he teaches him, he provides water for him, he nurtures him, so he can grow and learn to become a father himself. Just as truly he protects us, he teaches us, he provides living water for us, he nurtures us, so that we too can grow and pass on our ancestry. In every narrative in Scripture, God is present in a relationship from Adam to Moses to Noah to Abraham to you and to me. He is never a distant force if you allow him to become closer to you. Now let us pray. Creator God, your son referred to you as Adam, which suggests a warm and friendly figure. Allow us to look at those figures in our lives who loved us, cared for us, rescued us, and comforted us, and protected us when we needed. Let us also now give thanks for our other leaders in our church family who have nurtured and inspired us to make this a better diocese, a better parish, a better community, and a better family. And Father's Day, or Mother's Day, is an opportunity to honor that heritage and those giants of faith who have shown us how to live valiantly and sometimes, too, how to die nobly and in the peace of Christ. You have a plan for each one of us, for each a purpose in this world. Let us live in faith, allowing you to nurture and guide us, to reside beside us, before us, and within us, to live out that purpose. Allow us to be a spring of living water from you to others. Amen. The affirmation of faith. Hear our full Israel. The, the Lord, Lord our God is one. Love, Love the Lord, Lord your God, God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no command but greater than this. Prayers of thanksgiving and intercession. Let us pray to God, our Heavenly Father, Father of all, saying, Hear your children praying. Hear your children praying. Sovereign Lord, your Son has revealed you as our Heavenly Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named, Father of all. Hear our children, children pray. O oh Lord, we'd like to pray today for the ministry that you have blessed us with from Reverend Eli. We pray, O oh Lord, we pray a gracious blessing upon him as he continues to nurture your church in this parish of Catalonia. We pray also, O oh Lord, that you will lead us through this pandemic of COVID-19. You will reach the other side. You have made your church a spiritual family, a household of faith. Through baptism, we are reborn as the brothers and sisters of Christ. Deepen our unity and fellowship in Him, Father of all. Hear your children praying. You sent your Son to give His life as a ransom for the whole human family. Give justice, peace, racial harmony to the world who died to save. And on this national day for indigenous peoples, we remember our First Nations, Father of all. Hear your children praying. You gave your son to share in the life of a family in Nazareth. Help us to value our families, to be thankful for them, and to live sensitively within them, Father of all. Hear your children pray. 
your song drew around him a company of friends. Bring love and joy to all who are alone. Help us to find in the brothers and sisters of Christ a loving family. We have prayers on our hearts for those today that may have affections, mind, or body. And we remember some of those today in our hearts. Father of all, hear in the children of man. You are the God of the dead, as well as the living. In confidence, we remember those of the household of faith who have gone before us. Bring us with them to the joy of your home in heaven. We remember especially today in our prayers the street family in their time of sorrow. Father of all, hear your children. We say together the Catholic Office. Creator God, from you every family in her, heaven and earth takes its name. You have rooted and branded us in your covenant love, empowered us by your spirit to speak the truth in love and to walk in your way towards justice and wholeness. Mercifully grant that your people journeying together in partnership may be strengthened and guided to help one another to grow in the full stature of Christ, who is your life and our life. Amen. And now as our Savior, Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Since we did not have a Mother's Day service, I will read a... Uh, Poem, I guess a song uh, dedicated to mothers entitled No Charge. My little boy came into the kitchen this evening while I was fixing supper. He handed me a piece of paper he'd been writing on. So after wiping my hands on my apron, I read it, and this is what it said For mowing the grass, five dollars. For making my own bed this week, one dollar. For going to the store, fifty cents. For playing with baby brother while you went shopping, one dollar. For taking out the trash, fifty cents. For getting a good report card, five dollars. And for raking the yard, two dollars. Well, I looked at him standing there expectantly, and a thousand memories flashed through my mind. So I picked up the paper, and turning it over, this is what I wrote. For the nine months I carried you, growing inside me, no charge. For the nights I sat up with you, doctored you, prayed for you, no charge. For the time and the tears and the cost through the years, no charge. For the nights filled with dread and the worries ahead, no charge. For the advice and the knowledge and the cost of your college, no charge. For the toys, food and clothes and for wiping your nose, no charge. Son, when you add it all up, the full cost of my love is no charge. Well, when he finished reading, he had great big tears in his eyes. And he looked up at me and he said, Mama, I sure do love you. Then he took the pen and in great big letters he wrote, Paid in Full.
Creator, you bless us with many good gifts returned to you from your creation. We freely offer our time, talents, and treasures. Feed us with the bread of life, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, today we turn to you to give you thanks for mothers and grandmothers. With your own gift of life, they bore children in their wombs and gave them life. Most of all, Lord, on this Mother's Day, give our mothers the grace they most need and desire today. We ask you this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior and friend, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We give our thanks, Creator God, for the fathers and father figures in our lives. For those who are fathers, we ask for wisdom and humility in the face of the task of parenting. Give them the strength to do well by their children and by you. In your holy name, O oh God, we pray. Amen. Amen. And now, dear Lord, shine your face upon us and be gracious unto us. And Creator God, as only you are able, give us your peace in our going out and in our coming in, in our lying down and in our rising up, in our labor, in our leisure, in our laughter, and in our tears. Amen. And now we'll have our concluding musical selection by Claude, after which Oliver will do the dismissal. <coughs> Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.